Good morning, Born Again family and friends. It is cold out here. I hope you are staying warm in this winter wonderland. You guys, we have a great service in store for you. For one, we're gonna have Rachel Hockett and Drew Castleberry to do a awesome worship segment. And then we're gonna have a dynamic word by our very own minister, Derek D. Richardson II, called The Power of Reciprocity. Guys, we want you to share this broadcast with all of your social media friends. You can subscribe to our page if you haven't already and click that thumbs up icon to let us know we are doing a great job. Guys, we appreciate you so much for joining us this morning and have a great day. Stay warm.
was reading in scripture um, a couple of weeks ago, and I noticed when Jesus was speaking to Martha, when Martha was, um, was, you know the story, she was upset at what she was doing and what Mary was doing. And I noticed that he said her name twice. He said, Martha, Martha, you are busy with much or you are troubled with much and Mary's chosen the better thing. And what I, what caught my attention in that story was not the actual story itself, but him saying her name twice. And sometimes we have to say things over and over again until we believe it. And I saw the Lord saying her name twice to, to, to really get the point across, to calm what was troubling her. And in that repetition, when we sing something over and over and over again, we become persuaded, we become convinced that he is who he says he is. We become convinced that he's good, he's good, he's good, he's good, he's good. And trouble, he's good. In trouble, he's good. In darkness, he's good. In darkness, he's good. In joy, he's good. In joy, he's good. And the question, he's good. Yes, he is good. And the answer, he's good. Yes, he is good. And the questions, he's good. Yes, he is good. And the answer, he's good. Yes, he is good. For God is good, oh God is good, in the middle he's good, yes he is good, in the starting he's good, yes he is good, at the end he's good, yes he is good, and in the middle he's good, yes he is good, for God is good, yes he is good. Good morning, born again. Uh, this is Minister D here this morning, or Minister Derek Richardson II. I am very excited to be with you this morning. Uh, I'm grateful uh, for the honor to be blessed and bestowed upon me to be able to share uh, what I believe is a word from God. And so I'm excited. Uh, again, I'm just, you know, wish, uh, wishing love for everyone and I've uh, been praying and, and just, uh, just, just, just thanking God for each one of you back home. And, uh, and I know that, uh, you know, during this time, we've definitely done a lot of growing. And uh, even though I haven't seen you in a while, I definitely still feel connected to you. And so uh, this morning, uh, I got to believe I got a word from you. It's been on my heart for a while now. And uh, God said it was time. So it's time. Uh, and so the, the name of the message that I have for you this morning uh, is called um, <clears throat> uh, the power of reciprocity, the power of reciprocity. All right. And so our text is going to come from two uh, passages. Uh, but right now, really, the main verse we're going to focus on today is in First John four uh, verses 17 through 21. Again, that's First John four verses 17 through 20 to, through 21. All right. By living in God, love has been brought to its full expression in us so that we may fearlessly face the day of judgment because all that Jesus now is. So are we in this world. Love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. My God, whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. Our love for others is our grateful response to the love God first demonstrated to us. And I believe that's in the passing translation. And so this is what our whole text is going to come from. For the, for the most part. And so first I want to look at the definition of reciprocity. Okay. Now there's a couple of definitions in there. Uh, it's definitely a uh, sounds like a big fancy word, but it really isn't that complicated. Okay. Uh, now, uh, it, it says that it's given or felt by each, each toward the other. Again, it says given or felt by each towards the other mutual or mutual exchange inversely related, proportional or opposite something that is reciprocal to something else. Uh, and they have, a, uh, as an example, faith and fear are reciprocals. The ratio, now this is the mathematic version, the one that I like the most. The ratio of unity to a given quantity or expression that by which the given quantity or expression is multiplied to produce unity. Again, it is multiplied, the given quantity or expression is multiplied to produce unity. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of how this works mathematically. For those in middle school, you should definitely know this, and definitely in high school as well. But if I take the number, let's say uh, one-third, right? And I want to figure out one-third of three. Well, one-third and three are reciprocals of each other. 
because one third is the flip version of three. Because we all know, or if you don't remember, three over one represents three, because three divided by one is three. So if I take one third and I multiply by three, I actually get back what? One, okay? One. Again, if I take one third, multiply by three, I get back one. If I take one fifth, multiply by five, I get back one. If I take 10 over a million, and I multiply by a million over 10, I'll get back one, okay? That's how it works. So when I have a, a inverse relationship, right, and they come together, right, to, uh, and together, working together as an expression, as a quantity together, they're multiplied, they produce one, a unity. One represents unity, okay? The message is on, this message today is on how to receive from the Lord. This is what God's been showing me about this principle in, in mathematics. It's about how to receive from the Lord. Our strength actually comes, right? Or one way or one opportunity our strength comes to us uh, to produce uh, comes from our ability to believe and to receive, all right? And so in this outpouring of the latter rain that we're working on this year, I believe God is showing us how we can get in on the action, how we can position ourselves to receive, all right? And so the, I look at it like this. If I have an arrow coming down pointing this way, right? If you see my arm like this, the reciprocal of that is what? To start from here and I go back up in the other direction, right? This is a demonstration of reciprocity. What? I have an inverse relationship, but we know that they work together, right? When we do things in reciprocity, right? The, this, this noun, it's like it, it, it bounces back, okay? So I start here, come down, and I come back up. That's reciprocity. One third uh, times three over one is flip. Coming together, it brings one. OK. And so uh, God showed me this. Right. And uh, showed us this complicated or this completed principle first through the lifting up of his son. I'm going to say that again. God showed us this completed principle first. Right. We all know the, the, Mitch, the law of first mention. Right. But he showed us this through the lifting up of his son, the humbling and coming down and the lifting up of his son. OK. So let's turn to Philippians chapter two, one through eleven. It's one of my favorite passages. And I say it's my favorite is one of the ones that always convicts me. It always convicts me because I just see the level of that Jesus operated in. And I know that's the same level he's desiring for me to operate in this earth. So it says in verse uh, chapter two, verse one in Philippians, it says, look at how much encouragement you found in your relationship with the anointed one. You are filled to overflowing with this comforting love. You have experienced a deepening friendship with the Holy Spirit and have felt his tender affection and mercy. So I'm asking you, my friends, that you be joined together in perfect unity with one heart, one passion, united in one love. Walk together with one harmonious purpose uh, uh, <clears throat> and you will fulfill uh, my heart and with unbounding joy, uh, unbounded joy. Be free from pride filled opinions, for they will only harm and cherish uh, your heart, your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion self to hide in your heart, but in authentic humility, put others first and view others as more important, important than yourselves. Abandon every display of selfishness. Pro process a great concern for what matters to others instead of your own interests. And consider the example of Jesus, the anointed one, has set before us. Let his mindset become your motivation. So it gets good right here, y'all. It's already been good. But he, he existed in the form of God, yet he gave no thought to seizing equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to a form of a lowly servant. He became a human. He humbled himself and became vulnerable, choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient. He was, perfect ex he was a perfect example, even, if his, even in his death, a criminal's death by crucifixion. Now, here's the recipro reciprocity principle. Because of that obedience, God exalted him uh, and multiplied his greatness. He has now been given the greatest of all names. So Jesus came down. He humbled himself in obedience. And then what did God do? It bounced back and he gave him what? He multiplied his greatness. And so out of his obedience and coming down, God multiplied his greatness, right? He multiplied his greatness. And so it, 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 and what did it happen? He said now he's been given the greatest of all names. So he came down but was lifted up. The, now the authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence, right? And then everyone will submit to his name one day. And you can keep reading on. But it, it, that's what it's talking about, this reciprocity uh, principle, okay? And I'm not right that scripture, but I love the word of God. I love to speak it out loud because it, it, just, it just gives me fuel. And I wanted you to hear that. Uh, and this, this is a different version that is a, a newer version, the Passion Translation. But it really, the, I think, does a good job of explaining this humbling to be lifted up. 
right? But the humbling got to come first. But you see that Jesus came and completed the reciprocity principle. He came down. He didn't think of himself equality with God to hold on to or to cling to, but he came down and then God did what? He lifted him back up. So we're going to turn to John chapter 3, 14 through 16, right? And uh, you can read that on your own time. But it talks about there that in John 3, 14 through 16, that the Son of Man must be what? Lifted up, right? Lifted up on the cross, but also when he died, he rose again with power in his hand, my God. And so we know that whenever we believe in him, right? We believe in that thing that he showed us. We know that we have everlasting life. He came down, but he was lifted back up. Okay? Now, by reciprocating what we have received through Christ Jesus, we are operating in the power of unity. It is a mutual exchange with the most powerful being in the universe, God himself. So when we are able to receive that same level of the, that principle that he showed us, right? We are, we are coming to one with God and we are multiplying and, and, and partnering with a, a mutual exchange with God himself. You know, uh, uh, and just for that, just for God making a way and, and making that, I just take a second to give God some praise. So take a second in your home and just shout and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. So how to receive. OK, how to receive. OK, uh, receiving requires believing and believing is accompanied by action. And still, this transaction doesn't happen without desire. OK. I'm going to say it again. Receiving requires believing and believing is accompanied by action. It should be. And still, this transaction doesn't happen without some kind of desire within you. Look at James chapter two. Uh, you can read the whole passage 14 through 26. We all know the scripture. It says and that that whole principle is talking about faith without works is dead. He said, I'll show you my faith by my works. You can't. How are you going to show me your faith with no works? I'm going to show you my faith by my works. Faith without works. Faith without action is dead. Right. We got it's an, it is a sign. It is an example of the faith that's operating in us. So question, what are you doing to be able to receive the latter rain and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Take a second. Ask yourself that. What am I doing to receive the latter rain and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Do you want to receive it? Do you really want to receive it? The dilemma is not so much what you're doing, per se. Right. It's not exactly this script book of. These steps I got to do if I hear it, I got to write. No, what it is is, but it's rather that you are responding with some action from a heart belief and, uh, and having a desire to obtain it. Right. I have to respond. God, it's like it's like God gives a word and gives. He gave Abraham a direction and Abraham said, I'm going to go up and do this thing. But it's not about what to do specifically. It's about being able to respond in faith and to believe, right? And having a desire because so many times, and I'm getting into that sooner or later, but we, we hear and we receive, but then we don't go and act on it. We're like, oh, that sounds so great. Oh, the latter rain, God's pouring himself out. But what are we doing to receive that rain, right? We gotta put ourselves in a position to when he pours it out, then we can receive it, amen? So, and you can look at this example, right? And, uh, and this is just an example because there's other things, right? There's other ways, but if you're looking at, think about a person that's dying of thirst and desperate for water. I can believe, you know, uh, and they believe that water can solve the problem of thirst, right? Whatever problem it is, they believe this thing can solve that problem. If they get a chance to collect the rain, right, uh, uh, they're going to do whatever they can to position themselves to receive this thing, that, to receive this thing that can solve their problem, right? If they're dying of thirst, they're going to position themselves as raining. They're going to put buckets out in the rain. They're going to put something out that catches water because they are need water to survive, right? And then that's just one example, right? That's the one desire. But there's also people, right, that, that uh, and, and I gave that example because it, it's like a sign of desire, right? A sign of desperation, okay? But there's other ways too. But there has to be some kind of desire within you uh, uh, to do right or to be or to do uh, uh, to receive this thing. And if I believe it and I know that it's coming, God said this rain is coming this year, this outpouring is coming. How am I positioning myself to receive that rain? Uh, and you can ask yourself, right? And I believe this this sermon is really for believers. OK, and it's before it's for everybody, really. But you ask yourself this question. Am I thirsty enough? Is my delight in the things of the Lord? Because if it is, there got to be some changing. If I hear Bishop talking about this outpouring of the rain, right? I want to receive this and I don't want to miss it. But I can't just sit back on, on being a wallflower and right, this is a party, but I can't sit back being a wallflower and just watch everything happen. I got to get in the mist. I cannot let fear hold me up. So make yourself a container 
and put yourself out there to be reigned in. Take up some faith and receive that reign. Now, I'm going to give you three examples in the word that talk about this. OK, uh, first, looking at the woman in the alabaster box in Luke chapter seven, verse thirty six through fifty. OK, this is an example of a woman that definitely received what Jesus was trying to give her, what God was trying to give her. And so I'm going to I'm going to read. Uh, you can read that whole passage, but I'm going to just read verse forty seven here today. But I, I, I encourage you to go read the whole passage. It, it, it's so many nuggets in there. OK, so it says in verse forty seven, it says. Excuse me. She has been forgiven of all her many sins. This is why she has shown me such extravagant love. My God, she has been forgiven of all her sins. This is why she has show, shown me so much extravagant love. But those who assume they have very little to be forgiven will love me very little. Right. And that's again, that's a passing translation. But those who have been forgiven much, they will also love him much. But if you think you've been forgiven a little, you ain't going to love him that much. She received. She received forgiveness because she believed in Jesus as Lord. She responded to her. She responded by pouring her love on him like perfume. It wasn't a rule book that said, hey, you have to go do this because you got it. No, it was a response because she felt the desire to, to, to love on him. It wasn't a script in the book, but she had a response to what she believed. And Jesus said she is forgiven of her sins. And she's doing this because that's all that she has. She gave her best gift and poured it on me. Right. And she did that out of a response and faith. She didn't literally see her sins be forgiven, but she received it internally. And out of that, there was a response. But she positioned herself to make him Lord of her life. And she knew. And so she responded. That's that reciprocal pr principle. Jesus was there. He came down. He ministered to her. And then she was. She did what? She bounced back. And she said, hey, I want to pour my love on you the best way I can out of a natural response. And what is she doing that moment? God said, I'll tell about your story. The whole the whole world will know about her story. No one will ever forget this woman. They were talking about her. He said, no one will ever forget this moment because you came with me and now we're able to multiply together. And now that's a powerful story because of that reciprocal principle that she allowed to take place on her. She worked with him and she multiplied and now they became one. And now her, 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 her legend is in the, it's in the word of God. And we all talk about it every day. Think about the power of multiplication through reciprocating. Okay. My God, Whew, this is good. OK, I, I like this. This I'm telling you, this is for me. I was just excited reading this and going over this with God. So, OK, if you uh, don't think you need this rain, you probably won't attain it. If you won't do the things to position yourself to receive the rain. Right. She needed deliverance and she believed Jesus and she had uh, and she believed he was the one to deliver her. So she responded. Right. OK. And I talked about that. All right. So it, uh, we, we can't be one of those people that say, you know, we hear the word of God. We say, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. And we're like excited. But you take no action. What is that? Don't be deceived, people. Don't be deceived. That which a man soweth, he shall also reap. Sow a seed of expectation. Sow a seed of expectation. Activate some faith today. It doesn't make any sense. Literally, it makes no sense for someone to put a seed in the ground if you don't expect it to produce fruit. Why would you go put these little bitty seeds in the ground if you, just to be put them in the ground? It doesn't even make sense. But unless I believe that it will produce me some fruit back. My God, why would we waste our time? But if you expect you got to sow a seed or something, y'all, you got to sow some expectation. You got to put yourself in, in, in availability to the Holy Spirit and get quiet enough to hear what he has to say. And he will blow your socks off. My God, receiving in the spiritual manifests itself in the natural. Right. Receiving in the spiritual manifests itself in the natural for good and for bad. All right. Next story. Next, next, next uh, example. The Samaritan woman. Now you can go and read all of John chapter four, but I'm going to point out just maybe one or two verses here. Uh, John chapter four, verse 15. But that again, that whole chapter is talking about the Samaritan woman at the well. All right. And so uh, uh, she goes. And after he's talking to her, he advises them to why right? this is at noon part of the day. And I guarantee it was extremely hot in that part of town. You know, it's super hot, scorching. But they're there getting water. Right. Jesus is tired from the walk. All right. And so travel. So she said, please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. They'll, then I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come here to get water. She said, I won't have to come here to get water. Water. Yeah. Uh, she was really tired 
uh, of being despised by her community and people. You, we read in that scripture that God said, or Jesus said that she had uh, uh, four or five husbands, right? And so, you know, you think about, let's, let's look at it in, in natural day terms. If it's the hottest part of the day, the tradition back then, they usually got water in the evening. They would go to the well and, and get water in the evening or probably maybe some in the morning. Why? Because it was extremely hot. Right. So uh, you I've heard many commentators and talk about this and put it into to, to, to present day terms. She was going out there at noon because she thought she'd be by herself. Right. And it was just her and Jesus because she knew that people didn't like her because they looked down upon her. They talked about her. And when I read this verse. Right. She said, give me this water. I don't want to have to I don't want to have to deal with people bothering me and talking about me, looking down upon me. Right. She said, I need this. So I think it's even bigger than this living water. And we go on to see that it even ended up being that it was way, way bigger than that. Right. And so we know that even at the end of that, that, that chapter, it talks about in verses 34, 35 through 38, the harvest is now. She went back to her village and she brought people back and said, hey, I think I found the Messiah. I think this is him. Y'all got to come here. He told me everything I ever did. And so she believed and she knew it to be so. And so out of that, she multiplied with Jesus because she heard what Christ had to offer her. And she said, I'm tired of hurting. I'm desperate for change. I'm desperate for people to see me in a different light. So if you got this water that would change my life, I need it in me right now. And she said he had it. So she believed And What did she do? She responded. She received who he was. He said, I am the Messiah. I am the one you're talking about. I am the one you're looking for. And so she received what his words, what he said, and she went forth and she got more people and she was, became a minister that day like that. It didn't take her years and years of study. She automatically became a minister right then and there because she responded. We get so caught up in, in titles and, and, you know, in, in, in names and all these kinds of, it's like that stuff don't matter. If you can receive what thus says the Lord, you can go and do it because he's equipped you. He has equipped you by God. And so we know that it says at the end of that chapter that Jesus has sowed the seed and others have labored. Now we got to rip the harvest, y'all. We didn't sow all the seeds that we're reaping today. But now we have access to one of the greatest times of harvest that we have ever experienced. We got to work together and go and get these crops. We got to bring in the sheaves. <laughs> this passage, man, blows my mind. And I, will, I, I encourage you all to go read the whole passage. OK. And so um, this is found in Matthew 18, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. And this is after Peter had asked Jesus, they had heard him speaking about forgiveness. And Peter came to him and said, and it's funny to me because he asked so sincerely. He asked so sincerely. He was like, you know, Jesus, I can just imagine him saying, I mean, I, I, I envision him asking him sincerely. He said, hey, you know, master, what, what do you think? How, how often should we forgive someone? You know, maybe seven times, right? And, and if you go back and look at that verse, you remember that they're still living under the, the, the law. They're still, God is still revealing the living word in Jesus in fulfilling the word to them. So they don't know everything yet. So they're still living under the, the, the word that says an eye for an eye, a two for a two. And so Peter was asking that question out of an old way of doing things, right? And so Jesus said, I've come to fulfill that. But he said, he said, not seven times, Peter, but he says, is it 70 times, seven times, right? That is, in other words, way more than that. It's no limit to how many times you got to forgive someone. And then he gave a story and he said about the servant. All right. And so uh, I'm not going to read it, but again, I encourage you to read it. OK, but we know about the story that the servant goes to his master. The master is going to do an account of, of those that owe him money. He brings in this guy, his servant, and he says, hey, you owe me a billion dollars. Right. It's the, in, about equivalent to today, a billion dollars. Right. You owe me a billion dollars. Pay me back everything. I'm going to put you and your wife and everybody in jail and I'm gonna, I need my money back. And so the guy fell to his knees and he said, hey, he said, please, master, have mercy on me. And he begged, he begged him. And another, uh, uh, and, th and that uh, sometimes it can be translated, worshiped him, right? He just was begging earnestly, hey, have mercy on me. And so uh, the servant, we see later that after that, he goes and what? He goes, the, the master said he had compassion on him. And he said, hey, you know what? Your debt is forgiven. He said, the word says, your debt is forgiven. Don't worry about it. You're free to go. So he forgave him of a billion dollar debt. I'm praying for the government to forgive my loans of like whatever thousands of dollars that they just do that. For. But he gave, forgave him a mil, a billion dollars. <laughs> Lord Jesus, forgive my loans I got from school. But he gave him, forgive him a billion dollars. And so the guy was not able to receive it. He did not reciprocate it. Because if he had received it, I truly believe he would have reciprocated it. And so this is how I know he didn't receive it. His reaction next. His reaction next was to go. And he said, the Bible says, he choked this man. He, he put his hands on his man 
and choked him and said, hey, you owe me, it was like a few thousand dollars, right? Or it was some thousands of dollars. It wasn't nearly close to a billion dollars. He had his hands on his neck and he was choking him. He was choking him and he said, man, give me my money back. I need my money right now. And then the man said, he did the exact same thing that he did to the master. He fell to his knees and said, man, please forgive me. Have mercy on me. Give, he, he didn't even say, he didn't even say, forgive my debt. He said, give me time to pay it back to you. Give me some time. Don't do this to me. Please have mercy on me. And the servant said, no, I'm going to throw you in jail. Right. And your, I think he threw his family in jail, but he threw, he threw him in jail and said, hey, you're going to be in here until you pay me back. And so and when I read that, it just really disturbs me. It's like, it's like, man, how can we be so blinded? How can we block the, the, uh, the he didn't recognize he was forgiven. And I, I think about it now as I read back and look over it. It's like I believe the king already saw the second servant in advance. I believe that when he forgave that guy, he expected him to go forth and forgive someone else of, of, the, of the debt. Because he, I, I just, I think that's how God thinks. He's like, I'm forgiving you, but really I'm doing it so you can go and touch someone else's life. That's how he operates. And so in fact, you know, instead of receiving what the king was trying to do for the man, the guy received fear. God showed me he received fear. How do I know? Because he says, he says, how do we know that? His response, the enemy twisted the exchange that was supposed to happen. And he didn't receive that downpouring of the Holy Spirit. He didn't receive what the king was trying to do. Instead, he tried to go out and do what? Still pay the king back. And we all know that man wasn't going to pay that back and pay that man back in a lifetime. I don't even know how he rack up that much debt. That's a lot of debt. But we know he's not going to do that. So what he did was the enemy said, I'm going to block that transaction and I'm going to make him receive fear and stare so he can go out and do what? Because when, when we get scared, we want to do what? We want to control something. We want to control it so we can feel like we have the authority, so we can feel like we got it in our hands. And so that's the response of fear. That's the response. That's the, that's the fruit of spirit control, you know? And so uh, uh, the enemy twisted the exchange, and so it did not allow the man to receive that. And so because of that, that man ended up going to prison himself because he had people telling on him. <laughs> that's what I say. He had his buddies, or people that was associated to him, telling on him. And the king said, how could you do this? Uh, you servant, you wicked. How could you do this? I'm going to throw you in jail till you pay, and you're going to be tortured till you pay back everything you get that you, that you owe me. And so he wasn't able to receive it and it ended up being backfiring on him. So he wasn't able to reciprocate that. Right. And so because of that, he was he got himself in trouble. And I think about this. I think about what caused him to be afraid. He thought about his wife, he thought about his kids. And so rather of receiving that forgiveness, he got caught up in the fear of losing with the things that he had in his life. He got scared of he got scared of losing those things. He didn't he didn't he was trying to cling to what he thought was his greatness. Well, Jesus did what? He said, I let go of my deity. I let go of all that stuff and I humble myself. And so you got to do the same. But he didn't want to do that. And so he got to respond in fear and pay this man back when he clearly did not hear what the king was trying to give to him. He didn't receive it. Don't put a lid on your life. This man put a lid of what God was trying to do in his life. You have the power. You have that you have that power to block what God is doing in your life. You have that power. You have it. It's crazy. But in this natural realm, God has made us human beings to be the dominions, the leaders on this earth. Right. And, and even Jesus, that's why Jesus had to become. The, he said, I'm the son of man. He said, I put on flesh so that I can be operating in, in, in legality, the correct legal terms. Right. He put on the flesh so that he can operate and be an authority in this body. And so it, it God says, I'm not going to break my law. I'm true to myself. I'm not going to break what I intended to happen. So I had to make him the son of man so that when he died, he's going to, he's fulfilling everything I wanted to fulfill. And so we cannot yield or we don't want to block God from moving on our lives from not being able to receive it or yielding to the wrong person. This man yielded to the enemy. He yielded to that fear and he was in, in, in returns ended up hurting him. And go back and look at first John 4 and 18, which you already read earlier this, this message. But in that message, it talks about perfect love cast out fear. If you're worried about, if you have fear, you're worried about things happening to you. But if I have love operating me in perfection, I'm not worried about torment. It don't matter what come my way. I know that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's keep it moving. I wonder, this is the point, and you know, maybe I mentioned this in Bible study, but I want to keep it moving. So the Lord gave his best gift to us, right? He gave his best gift. He gave us himself. So just so just so we can receive forgiveness and enter back into an intimate relationship with him. Who are we to hold that back from allowing others to receive that same level of mercy? Right. Uh, we have received right. Not being a witness of his mercy or grace and goodness and love. Who are we to hold that back from God to be a witness of his goodness that is transpired in our own lives? 
Who are we to not let our light so shine before men and preach the gospel and heal the sick and cast out demons? Who are we to stop the power of recipro uh, reciprocation happening in this dark world we live in? Why would we want to block that? Why? Who are we to block the move of God? Don't think of yourself too high and don't think of yourself too low to where you can't allow God to move in you and to use you as he sees fit. You want to obtain the rain? Put your mind on Jesus Christ and take it off yourself. Stop worrying about how it makes me feel. If I, if I want to go do this, it takes too much time. Oh, I got to pray. I got to fast today. Don't even worry about that. When, I, when we do this stuff, on, when you go all your day of the week to pray and fast, don't worry about what you're not eating. Worry about what, not even worry. Go to God and talk to him about what's happening in this world and speak to those things and call them out. We can't get caught up in ourselves and how we're feeling. Oh, I got a headache. Maybe I need to eat a little something. Like, no, stop it. Stop it. Take it off yourself. If you feel like that, say, Jesus, I'm struggling right now. Come help me. You said you put it all on yourself, so let me put it on you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so we got to stop worrying about ourselves. When we focus on ourselves, we get caught up in fear and worry. And I'm not enough. And, oh, I, I'm too good. Or I got pride. You know, we worry about the wrong stuff. We got to put it on Christ because he said, I'm strong enough to take it on me. It's scary, to, it's, scary to battle, it's scary to believe that believers still battle with this. After all God has done for this, or us. And all we got to do is receive the love that Jesus showed us. The Father showed us. All we got to do is receive the love that they showed us, right? And we talk about how can I, you know, how am I blocking God? How am I stealing from God? You, go, you can go to Malachi uh, chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. And it talks about, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, how have I robbed you, God? He said, in tithes and offering, things you're supposed to give to me. He said, you are cursed. Now, keep in mind, how if you're robbing him from tithes and offering, that means God, again, is demonstrating his uh, reciprocity principle because what to have tithes and offering to give he had to have given you something first in the first place so you are robbing God and God says you're stopping the flow of reciprocity that I want to happen in your life you're not blessing these ministries that I've given you these finances to use and to be a blessing to oh my god think about I mean I think about even that testimony that we heard last was it last year the year before last well, we got this crazy donation from someone uh, the bishop never told us about, but it's someone, right? The blessed ministry. And just think about just how pleased God was with that because they were obedient to this great gift. And, and, and just think about how much it blessed us. And so I think about that person that go, gave that the gift. Man, they were probably just overwhelmed with bless, blessings to see uh, the move of God. But if we don't do it, if we, if we are receiving from God these, this increase, but we hold it to ourselves, that's a shame. We should not do that. You are stopping the flow, your increase. You you cannot receive the outpouring if you're going to just block it up and hold it to yourself. It doesn't even make sense to do that. God says, I can't even bless you no more. You're robbing me of the opportunity to be a blessing unto you. If you hold those things I give to you and you try to hold it for yourself and don't worry about reciprocating it or, or bringing it forth and producing anything, you're holding it to yourself and you're doing yourself and me a disservice because God truly wants to bless us. He said, he said in this verse, he said, try me out. He said, he said, test me to see. He said, trust me. Just, you know, he said, test me. Try me out and see what I open up heaven. My God, and see what I open up a window from heaven and pour on you a blessing that you don't have room to receive. God wants to bless us so that we can reciprocate. So that we are reciprocating out of an overflow, out of an overflow. Are you robbing God today, y'all? Are you receiving from him what he wants to give you so that you can multiply him in this earth? Do you believe he's serious about this harvest? If so, then let's make our actions line up. Ask God to help our attitude and get excited about this work. Stir up the gifts within you. First Timothy, I mean, sorry, 2 Timothy 1, verses 6 through 7. Stir up that gift that was put onto you by the laying on of hands. If an elder's ever prayed for you, if bishops ever prayed for you, if anybody's ever prayed for you, stir up that gift. If you receive anything good from God, which I know everybody in here has, then you need to stir up that gift. You got to get that thing going. And to stir that gift up, you got to just be out actively doing, doing, working. And not, and not doing it from a place of work, but doing it place, from a place of receiving and responding. We got to receive first so that we can respond the way God has asked us to. Right? It's not about you. It's bigger than you. And I'm not saying that you're not important. We, I know that I'm important. I know that Chip is important. I know that my, my wife, you know, she's important. We're all important. But it's not about us. It's about Christ. If we make it be about ourselves, then we, 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 we limit God and we get so focused on our own mess and junk. When God says, I came and I fulfilled the work, 
I fulfilled this thing for me, for you. I, I fulfilled the word so that you don't have to worry about this legalism thing. I did it so that I can, that you can put your weight, you put your cares upon me. I did it for you. I completed it. He said, we are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, y'all. Through Jesus Christ. All right, so uh, 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 let him help you, y'all. Let him help you. And just stop thinking about the things I got to do. How can I be a blessing? What I got to do? Just respond some kind of way. After you receive, after you read the word and you're inspired and you're encouraged by the word, if he's been a blessing to you, if he's been good to you, if he's done anything good in your life, just receive him, right? And receive that thing and then go and respond out of that thing. Don't let fear block that thing. Don't let fear block that flow that God wants to flow on you. If we go to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 38 through 30, 39, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. God, y'all, we are not those that draw back. We cannot be. It's not enough time. And in this verse, talking about drawing back from the faith. We are not the ones to draw back from the faith. We cannot sit back on a wall casually watching things observing. Oh, man, that's crazy. Oh, man, I can't believe that happened today. Oh, man, they didn't go through it again. But I, I don't want to be that person. <laughs> I've got to be one that goes forth in the mighty power of God. I want to be one that moves in the presence of the Lord because I want to see salvation come. And I don't want to get on that day of judgment. And God said, you could have did this, this, and this. And I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. But I'm not worried about that. Glory be to God. But it's like I, I want to make sure that, like Miles Mal Rose said, I want to be empty when I leave this earth. Like, like Dr. Miles Rose always said. He said, I want to be empty I got to be empty, poured out. And not, and, and, and not let that be a, a scary thing. But in pouring out, man, there's so much joy in pouring out. It, 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 it's like when you pour out, you want more to give. It's, 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 it's this principle, y'all. All right. We can know that the outpouring of the Spirit is good. But we avoid it because we're afraid of how it may change us. We know it costs us something. But it's crazy. When we pay the cost and allow the Holy Spirit to do His thing in us, we open up ourselves up to his presence we always enjoy it and love it and glad we surrendered every time who has truly surrendered to him and not and, and regretted it that they did no one <laughs> that doesn't even make sense the bible talks the bible talks about how those that have received him and able to uh it's like if you really receive them then you're gonna have some true response because he is something that, that is overwhelmingly good and so uh don't be scared. Every time I feel like a hesitation or something to get into his presence or I feel like a drawback, I just got to go in there and do it. And every time I do, oh my gosh, it's like those are the best times and the best moments that I have with him. It's because I just die to myself and go and spend time with him and let him full flow into me and fill me up that I can pour out to someone else. Amen. And there's a famous quote by, not by Nelson Mandela, by the way. It's by Miriam Wilkinson. Uh, she wrote a book, a book, and I can't remember the name of the book, and I should have wrote it down, but I didn't have it at home. And we all, all hold their quote probably, but it says, our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure, right? And it goes on to talk about in that book, that that passage is such a powerful passage that Nelson Mandela, uh, he, he shared on one of his speeches he gave. So people give him credit, but it was really her. And, uh, and so she talks about how who are you to, to cover your light up? That doesn't, that doesn't even make sense. Who are you to, to say you're not great, to not be great, to not produce and be a light in this dark world? Who are you to, to, to not be awesome and to be beautiful and to be wonderful? Who are you not to be, you know, everything good? Your God says, I made you to look like me. And if we made us, if he made us to look like him, we both supposed to be looking real good on this earth, y'all. We got to be. We can't. Our fear is not that we, we get so caught up in trying to maintain and be uh, uh, mediocre. We can't do that. You got to be uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable sometimes to be great because we feel like attention comes on us sometimes. But we got to just say, hey, man, I can't be worried about that stuff. If God wants to raise me up and let him raise me up, it don't matter. But I want to be obedient that I may have peace in my soul, knowing that I've done all that I can do to honor the Lord God Almighty. All right. So uh, Romans chapter 10. Uh, verses four. Then we're going to jump over to verse nine through ten. For Christ has already accomplished a purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. If you openly declare that Jesus, this is verse 9, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it's by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. 
right? And we all know this passage for those that have gone through training, or even maybe not. But this is the this is what Bishop prays for the sinner's prayer, where we give people give their lives to the Lord. And so it comes from this verse. It says we got to believe in our heart, and that He rose him from the dead, and that He that we've been saved, and that uh, we got to confess out loud that we are that we are saved. It's a it's a it's a receiving and a believing, and it's also a confessing, right? Again, that's a principle in action as well receiving and believing within our hearts and then confessing out loud, right? Back to that V, right? That that down and back up again. It's that reciprocity. We got to believe and receive, then we confess. And when we do, we will know in verse 4, it says, Christ has accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. He accomplished it. So if I'm in him, if I believe in him, then, I'm accompl- then I've accomplished it too. My God, if he's accomplished it, then I've accomplished it. My God, thank you, Jesus. And we've been made right with God so we don't have to worry about Judgment Day in the name of Jesus. Thank you. All right, so uh, we put too much emphasis on us sometimes. Look at the one who gave to us first and find out just how much he gave. Then it will, I promise you, it'll change your life. If you receive and recognize how beloved you are to him, how beloved and how awesome you are to him, it will change your outlook on life. It'll change how you go about. I remember when I, when I first, you know, I say I got saved. I, got, I grew up in the church and I know that I gave my life to the Lord as a young age, but I know that I, you know, kind of was doing my own thing, but I know when it got to a point where I was like, I got to be serious about this thing. I remember after that day, I, uh, uh, it was like I was like 19 years old and I, I remember I said, God, I, I'm going to be, I got to be serious about that. I'm all in now. This is, that's my day to go all in with him. And I remember after that, it was certain things that I just didn't want to do anymore. And it was out of a response of respect and gratitude, just like, the, just like the woman with the alabaster box, that I just, it was a natural thing that flowed up out of my spirit. Because now I had this thing flowing in me, right? And I didn't want to do, I didn't want to step on a bug. I don't want to kill any bugs. Because I just felt, this is God creature. I remember having those thoughts. I didn't want to just watch and look at anything because it just made something indifferent in me. I, I had uneasiness about listening to some of the music I listened to. Because I just said, man, this ain't uplifting God, right? And so, and again, this is just my testimony. But it's just some things that it, I just, my, my whole heart changed. It was different. And, I, and it was a response thing. It was a response. And I had to, and I let that thing flow. I didn't just ignore it and kept doing what I wanted to do, but I let that thing flow. And as I let it flow, God took me, has taken me to heights and things and sweet moments with him that I just never forget, that I never forget. It, 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 he showed me his the sweetness of him. He let me see him as a father that loved me, that didn't, wasn't out to get me. But in fact, he wanted me to give me everything. He wanted to bless me with everything and have no sorrow with it. And so I give him thanks for that. Born again, I want to ask you this question, okay? Can this gallon of water fit into this cup? Again, what do you think? Can this gallon of water fit into this cup? Seems like a pretty obvious answer, don't you think? Okay, let's see. Let's test it out, okay? This is symbolic of receiving. Now, as you notice, every ounce of this water is going through this cup, right? This cup represents you. It represents us as individuals in this world. This bo- box right here, it represents the world, it represents the, 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 the realm that we live in now. But notice, I ask you this question, can this water fit this cup? It can, right? The only way that it can is if it pours out of itself if it reciprocates what's going inside of it, right? Right, as it's reciprocating, it's pouring out and then it's able to obtain everything that's coming down from this. This could be good things, this could be bad things. This could be godly things, this could be evil things. But we can obtain it if we're allowing the Holy Spirit, who represents this water, to fill us up. If we pour out. If I stop, if I block it, and I try to pour, right? It just goes out, oops, <laughs> it just goes out, right? When I have fear, when I respond in fear, I put a lid over myself and I don't allow God to pour within me so that I cannot reciprocate anymore. So we have to be open vessels. You gotta be an open vessel, right? And I got this from uh, Jonathan Kahn in a book that he wrote, right? It's just this idea and God gave it to me for this, for this uh, thing. And so this message is, so if you notice this cup has obtained all of the rain, but it was only capable because it was not a lid on it. It was open, right? And then it reciprocated, right? I would love to have a a way that I could pour it in there and it bounces back up to sort of V that I was showing you earlier, right? But then when we do that, what happens? Look, those around us, those around us get filled up with as well, 
when we're able to reciprocate and we pour out, it's just it's automatic. That He says, God says, I'm going to pour on you a blessing that you don't have room to receive. And so what, why is it for? It's so that those around us, represents this vessel, get filled up as well. And then when they get filled up, they fill up those around them as well. And so we got to be able, we have to understand that I can't obtain this rain. But I have to position myself and be open to the Holy Spirit's leading. And as he pours out into my life, if I can receive who I am through him and his love for me, then I can reciprocate the exact thing that God wants him to reciprocate. And so I want to pray for everyone this morning. Uh, I'm going to just say a general prayer for everyone. And then I'm going to provide an opportunity to pray for those that feel like that they are not strong enough, that they are not, uh, you know, as this message described, maybe a believer that's been walking with God for some time. I want to pray for you as well. Uh, but this is for believers, right? But it's also for non-believers that want to get in on this action because it's coming back real soon. And this harvest is ready. It's easy pickings, y'all. It's easy pickings. And so I want to pray for you right now. If you feel like uh, you've battled with receiving from the Lord, if you battle with identity and beloved identity and understanding how much God loves you, if you have a hard time receiving his love for you, if you have a hard time uh, thinking of him as a father that loves you because your, your own uh, uh, hurts in the past from your own father, I want to pray for you this morning that you can receive and that you will have the courage and, and the boldness to go out and to obtain this rain by positioning yourself, just like this cup, open up himself, that he can be refilled up to brim and pour out and reciprocate this rain. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I just lift up Almighty God, oh God, your holy name, God, be glorified in us, oh God. Lord, we thank you that you have chosen us as your people, that you have chosen us, oh God, to pour into our lives, oh God, to love us, oh Lord God, and to be, oh God, with us so closely and so intimately. And so Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray, oh God, your power down right now. God, I pray for everyone in their living room, in their car, Almighty God, at their job, wherever they're listening to this message, Almighty King. Oh God, I break, Almighty God, the demonic, the demonic strongholds in the name of Jesus. Devil, I break your hand off of them right now. Oh, everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice, I command every demonic spirit of intimidation, anything that was causing them to be limited or to be blocked in their heart, oh God. We come against those things right now, and I command them to be broken and to be released in the name of Jesus. And oh God, I send forth your spirit right now, wherever they're hearing this word, oh God, to receive, oh God in your fullness, oh God. Father, that they oh, may go forth, oh God, out of after receiving from you and your love for them, oh God, that they may go forth and produce, oh God, good fruit in this world. Oh God, that they, oh Lord God, may not be empty-handed when you come back and when you return, that they would have multiplied the talents and the gifts you've given unto them. Oh God, that you may be pleased with them, for that they have not set on their gift, but they have used it, Almighty oh, God. They have reciprocated it, Almighty oh, God, into this land. And so God, we come against, oh God, the spirit of fear. We rebuke it and we cast it off their lies right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God. And we stand, oh Lord, in your power and in your might and in your strength. And oh God, I release, oh God, your blessings right now. I release your ministering angels, Almighty God, over whoever's listening to this message right now. I release, Almighty God, your mighty spirit, oh God, to break the yoke and to influence them, Almighty God, to produce, oh God, to produce, Almighty God, to produce, Almighty King, oh God, your goodness in this land. Oh God, we give you thanks today in Jesus' name. We pray. And I want to pray also for those that don't know the Lord and Savior or have, have, have grew up in the church. You know, I know like they grew up in the church or they have heard the word or they even go to church on a regular basis. I want to pray for you as well, uh, that, that you want to recommit your life into the Lord this morning or this evening or whenever you're listening to this. And so, Father God, this repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm sorry. I repent of all my sins. I'm sorry for my shortcomings and me not being able to do it the right way. I welcome you into my life right now. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, came and died for me. But he didn't stay in the grave, but he rose again on the third day. And now he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, making intercession for me. And so Lord, I thank you right now. For Lord, I am saved, I am forgiven, I am made whole through your son, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, sacrifice for me. And so, God, I ask right now that you fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Let me manifest, O oh God, the gifts of tongues, O oh God, that I may speak, O oh Lord, with my heavenly language, O oh God, when I don't know what to pray, but that I may speak with utterances, O oh mighty King, and usher in your presence everywhere I go, that you may always be with me and I may always be with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Father. Amen. Saints, go out and obtain the rain. Make yourself vessels for the Lord. Receive his love for you and then go out and produce it and be action-oriented in this world.
because you got souls to win, y'all. We got souls to win. God bless you. Hey, Born Again family. First of all, I hope you have been staying safe and warm throughout this winter weather. I also want to thank you so much for your faithful giving throughout this time. I'm here to remind you of all the ways you can give. You can go online and give through our website. You can also give directly from the app. Really easy, that's how we do it. And you can also mail in your giving. So at this time, I just wanna thank you again and I'm going to say a prayer over our offering. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your blessings, God. Thank you for providing and meeting all of our needs exceedingly and abundantly. Heavenly Father, I just pray over all the offerings that's been given online, um, through mail, God, and all the other ways that the body has been giving. Heavenly Father, bless it, and we just give it to you, to your honor and your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.